that building? Which where they, it's, it's just where they got the, the big tubs that they uh, mix the whiskey in. It's probably 20,000 gallon tanks, 10,000 gallon tanks and stuff like that. Now, um, I have referred to this as the heart of the operation. Can can they produce whiskey, make their product with what's going on? Can it, no. can it be salvaged? No, I don't know what can be salvaged because I don't know how severe, but it looks it looks like it's going to be totaled. So you think they're, they're out of operation for some time to come? It looks like it might be, yes. All right. Well, Henry, thank you so much for calling. And, and I, I know this will, will be a difficult time for you to, uh, it, you know, if my television station were going up in flames, it, it'd be a rough day. So I really appreciate you calling. We have someone else on the line, um, I believe. We have a uh, second shift worker. And I've been joined by <laughs> Gary Rodemeyer. Thank you very coming, much. Coming from the newsroom, put to a little support. Uh, hello, do you, caller, are you there? Hello. Yes, uh, uh, we understand you were working on the second shift. Were you working there when, when the fire uh, actually occurred? Hello. Hello. Uh, yes, caller, yep. could Hello. you identify yourself? This is Joe Algar. Joe? Joe, you're an employee at, uh, at the uh, distillery? We may have lost Joe. Um, sometimes they cannot hear us, but I understand we have a lot of people on the line. Is there another caller there? Yes. And what is your name, sir? My name is Scott Cox. Scott, and your connection to this distillery? I used to uh, work there in the summers as a college uh, job, okay. and sometimes as a uh, night watchman. Yes. All right. And right now you're seeing uh, the uh, vats where they put the uh, mash where they will fermentate for 72 hours. Mm. The bottom left hand, the note to the right, where it starts going into what they call the steel, where it starts separating the beer, and uh, it'll flow over the top. Uh, the beer will flow from the bottom out to make slop, and the... Uh, top will start going over to the next part of the steel, uh, which starts the alcohol process, separates the beer from the alcohol. Mm -hmm. And as you can see over to the far right, that's the uh, property owned by uh, the Smith family who uh, used to uh, lease the uh, property that's on fire. I don't know if they've ever sold it to Heaven Hill, but they may still actually own that property, which they leased to Heaven Hill Distillery. Did you ever have any previous uh, incidents of fire when you were there? Was, it, was that a, a considerable a worry and threat here with all of this volatility in the buildings? Yeah. Now, this is the first time I've ever known of any fires of this kind. There's very minimal electricity going to these uh, warehouses, obviously, because they're so volatile and flammable. Uh, basically, the only thing they have is on each corner or every other corner, they'll have a uh, light for the night watchman basically to go by and have sufficient light to see uh, his key punch to uh, punch his clock. But there was a, a small electrical fire, we were told by, by Henry, a worker there Monday and was reported in the Bardstown paper Monday, a small electrical fire. Hmm. Uh, we do not know which warehouse um, that was in. We do not know if it's one that where it started or even one that's affected at all. Right, and one thing that also could probably help accelerate the uh, fires due to how they ventilate these warehouses. They'll open up the bottom windows and the top windows, and they'll try to get that circular type ventilation, which obviously is just going to fan it um, like a um, cyclone, lack of a better description. Well, there you're seeing... Um now that's right there where they start making the uh, mash, which will fermentate for 72 hours, and it actually is beer at that process before it's pumped over to the steel. I'm not certain if that's the building on fire or if it's or if it's liquid uh, spilled outside the building that's burning there. It looks like. It seems that these flames here at the distillery. This is the the brick building now. Now it's going yes. out of your screen. We need yeah, to pan right a little in, bit. Uh, over to the uh, on the other right. side of 49. It's uh, pretty much the building in center. That's also a warehouse. Mm -hmm. And a couple of buildings down is actually where there's a a sample lab where they um, take samples uh, and run them up to the bottling house to the main lab and have the uh, proofs uh, done on those each day. The, the buildings in the, in the bottom right hand of your screen. On the right hand of 49, as you're looking right, right. now, they, those two uh, large buildings are, in fact, warehouses. And um, if you'll come down, it's, uh, uh, there's also a small building where, uh, where workers gather before they uh, actually start the work day, work shift. Okay. And there's also okay. a small office where they uh, take samples and every morning take them up to the uh, main building in the bottling house for the lab to run proofs uh, right. every day. Scott, okay. we have someone else on the line. And uh, this person apparently was uh, on the scene when the fire started. Let's go to that caller. Caller, are you there? Hello? Hello, yes, are you there? Uh, could you identify yourself for us? Yeah, Gary, this is Doug Cornett. 
Doug, how are you this afternoon? We understand you were uh, on the scene there when the fire started at the distillery today. Well, I was there after the, the first warehouse caught on fire. Me and my father drove out. He's a photographer, and we were going to shoot some pictures. And we parked right across the road from that first warehouse. We were probably four or 500 yards away, and the heat was so intense, the side of my truck got so hot you couldn't touch it. Now, um, Doug, can you tell us that warehouse, the first one that's caught on fire, is that the one in the bottom right portion of the screen? Can you see a television right now? Uh, let's see. It would be the one on the outer edge of the property there. Yeah, it's the one closest to, to Highway 49. It would be right. almost across from the distillery itself. Now, what was the wind like when yeah. you were there, Doug? I, I, yeah. I, I suppose that was the reason this thing spread so ferociously. If it had been for the wind, there would probably been one warehouse to go up, and that was it. The wind was hmm. blowing so that's strong. That's it. And the flames were shooting probably two or three hundred feet in the air at about a 45 degree angle. So the flames were heading right towards the other uh, warehouse. So from your knowledge, it started in one particular warehouse and then spread to other warehouses and then to the distillery itself. Is that right. well, kind of the, the progression? Wind, the wind whipped it into the other houses. And I would say that the whiskey running out probably across the road caught the distillery on fire. How yeah. long were you at the fire? Oh, probably around 20, 25 minutes. And, and then were you forced to leave the area? No, we just left. Uh, I knew the others were going to catch on fire, it looked like, and we decided to get out of there. I and, see. Uh, and, and how close? You were just across 49, right, were you across? Just right across 49, right where the distillery itself is burning right could, now. I could, see. Could you estimate the wind at that time? Was it whipping like 30, 40 miles an hour? Is that... I'd say probably 35 or 40. Mm -hmm. It was whipping real good. And uh, this is the second one I've seen. I was at the Waterfield and Fraser fire back in, I think it was 67 or 68, July 4th, uh -huh. and it was at night, and that whiskey coming out of that warehouse flowing into the creek would, would float right on top of the water and just right. burn. Well, that apparently yeah. is what has happened. I don't know if you heard that, yeah. that part Ann Jewell was reporting from Sky 11, that that is apparently what has happened now. It is The uh, whiskey did flow into the creek, and uh, the creek for a time was on fire. Uh, parts of it still are, Melissa. Parts of the creek are still burning at this point. Ann Jewell is in Sky 11. They arrived um, about 4.08 this afternoon after we'd been on the air for a few minutes and just um, actually took us in to the fire from uh, 20 miles out. And in the time you've been there, this appears that it's kind of been contained. Can you tell, has the wind died down now and it, and it has not spread since you've been there? Is that correct? Uh, Gary, I'm sorry. I, I'm getting all kinds of traffic in my headphones here. Uh, if you could repeat that, please. Yes, the fire has not spread since you've been there. It, it seems to now be sort of contained. It looks that way. I think that the fire around the distillery uh, kind of flared up there for a while while we were here. Uh, it doesn't look as bad as it did for a time there. Um, it looks like we've got another building that is uh, newly on fire, or if you can see that, uh, I'm trying to see, yeah, Rob Michaud is focusing in on that. It looks like that's uh, a relatively new flame that, that's going there in that building. Um, it could end up looking like all the other uh, piles of, of burning debris that we see here uh, spread out across the, across the, uh, the property here. Yeah, the spe and the speculation was that river of flame spread from those buildings rather than this time being spread by, uh, by the wind. It was spread by uh, a liquid on the ground that was burning. Does that seem possible to it, you? It sure does seem possible because it all kind of trails down uh, into the water. The, the, the creek itself is sort of downhill from all of this that's going on and, and I think it makes a lot of sense that that could uh, definitely be what's going on as far as the creek being on fire. Yeah. Gary? Has the wind died down there now, Ann, somewhat? Can you I'm going to ask uh, pilot Bob Poe what he thinks about that. Gary? He thinks that uh, the wind has died down a little bit, but it's still blowing pretty well. Uh, we also hit uh, various uh, pockets of turbulence uh, as, we, as the, the heat from the flames uh, comes up and, and uh, rocks us around a bit along with the, the regular strong winds as well. Okay, Gary. Thank you, thank you Ann. And Jewel, who's been reporting uh, from Sky 11 since shortly before 4 o'clock and actually flew us into these flames. Again, this is Heaven Hill Distillery, if you have just joined us. This is Heaven Hill Distillery. Um, at least four warehouses are on fire. Also, portions of the distillery itself are on fire, a brick building that uh, you can see just beyond the flaming warehouses. This all began at 2 o'clock.
We, for, uh, for a very short while, are going to lose. These are Sky 11 pictures we've been showing you since uh, right about 4 o'clock. For a portion of time, we are going to lose the Sky 11 pictures. Um, we are going to land for a brief period of time. And uh, during that time, we will take you back to the beginning of this fire when we actually could see it uh, 20 miles out. When you get into the air, you're only about um, a few minutes out of 20 minutes. Wouldn't you say, Gary? 20, yeah. 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Uh, air time out of Bardstown and almost as soon as we got into the air out of the Louisville area you could see the flames so you could see them for miles and miles around. As I said we're going to lose the live pictures from Sky 11 in just a few minutes that's because Sky 11 is going to land. We are going to take uh, one of the fire chiefs up in the helicopter and uh, they will be able to uh, tell us a little bit about what you were seeing. Uh, some of the amazing things you're seeing is, is right in the bottom of your screen. That is the fire in the creek under State Road 49. Mm -hmm. That is a bridge that goes um, over the creek there, State Road 49. And that is um, a fire that is burning on the creek. One encouraging thing here, Melissa, is that it seems there's there is less burning liquid on the ground at this point that we can see than earlier. This entire area on the ground, you can see the scorched earth there, seemed to be engulfed by flames for about the last hour. Uh, a previous caller had told us that it looked like the fire first started in one of the warehouse structures. And then at the time, there was a strong cold front moving through the area, winds of 30 to gusts of 50 miles per hour whipping the flames and spread it very quickly from warehouse to warehouse. And then in addition to that, exploding barrels of whiskey in these warehouses sent liquid spraying out into the area, running along the ground. There were rivers of flame. It went downhill toward the distillery area, and there you can see the fire spread there. But right now, it appears that the fire is contained, at least the wind has died down a little bit, the fire is contained to those five or six warehouse areas that you see and the distillery right in front of you. And we have been watching this picture now for approximately the last uh, 45 minutes to an hour. And those buildings that are being protected by the firefighters, you can see the spray on the buildings, the other warehouses containing whiskey, and it is volatile and flammable. If it was to spread to those uh, buildings, they would go up just as you see the ones burning in front of you. But they have protected those throughout the last hour, and it looks like they may be safe from the flames. Once again, not spreading because the winds have died down at least a little bit. Maybe this thing will now burn itself out. But uh, it seems like the only spreading uh, fear now would be from liquid along the ground. You can still see uh, flames uh, burning along Everyone's the ground. Still yeah, between up. The, yeah, between the two uh, uh, burning warehouses there, and, and they're not warehouses anymore, just burning debris. But you can see uh, little rivers of of uh, alcohol and flame. I think I think maybe Melissa, you said it earlier. Uh, this was just like a a fire in an Indianapolis race car. It's uh, alcohol driven. That is, that is what actually one of the professors at U of L said uh, this would, would be a lot like would be a, a fire at the Indianapolis 500. That's how flammable the liquid is. And firefighters can tell you even without this flammable liquid that the intensity of, of this fire and the heat of this fire, the fire can jump from building to building just by making the other building hot and burst into flames. It, it doesn't actually have to have a direct path to travel, does not have to to uh, burn from building to building, um, that it can cause other buildings to catch on fire by flammable liquid running between them, as in this case it looks like, or just because of the combustibility of the building uh, materials. Right now you are looking at videotape. Our Sky 11 has um, cut its signal so we can land and take up people who know a lot about this fire, how it started, how it's being put out so we can take them up into Sky 11. This is videotape from shortly after we arrived on the scene, and you can see right there is where part of the distillery is going up in flames. These are not warehouse buildings. These are production buildings, and we have had workers at Heaven Hill Distilleries tell us that this is, is indeed the guts of the operation, and they do not know how Heaven Hill will um, we'll stay in business, will produce whiskey with these buildings out of commission. Uh, warehouses are one thing, but these, this is the heart of the operation. Yeah, and this is going to have a, a terrific, uh, tremendous economic impact uh, on Nelson County. This is one of the principal industries of the, of the county there. This not the only distillery. This Heaven Hill distillery makes uh, bourbon whiskey, including uh, products like Heaven Hill, Evan Williams, Elijah Craig, Henry McKenna, Philadelphia 
blended whiskey and Jim Clear grain alcohol. Those are just some of the products that are, are produced here. And uh, it looks like uh, uh, they are going to be uh, out of out of commission at least for a while and that is going to affect people's livelihood and the ability of this company to uh, to do business. 